Hey guys, today I'm going to explain the narwhals and what I expected to happen and what actually happened. So what I expected to happen with narwhals was for it to go. So my concept of narwhals was I noticed that I had received a narwhal and said $1.50 and I thought that price was kind of funny because it's not a good card. Two double blue for a, I mean, it's a first strike protection from red, two two for four. Now, the only format it can be played in turns out to be Legacy and Vintage and maybe EDH if you really wanted to push it. But it's not like, even in standard today, it would be considered a very, very bad card. I picked a card because I wanted to see if it, I didn't expect anything to happen to the card. I expected at most for it to go to $1.50. So my goal was to push it to a dollar fifty and see what it would take to get there unfortunately what happened was or fortunately for this video i purchased about 20 of them uh, i only went after near mint so there was a lot of like light plays and uh, things of that nature but i wanted you know near mint because what's the difference it's like five cents or ten cents difference uh, between slight play and near mint so went ahead and got it. I picked this card because I picked the worst set I could pick. I hate Homelands. Most people hate Homelands. So I wanted to pick a card from Homelands. And I knew it had to be this card. First of all, it's a very cute creature. I did not know about the Norwhale video. I have since watched the video. And it is kind of creepy, but at the same time amusing. I mean, Norwhale, Norway is ca causing a commotion. And they're awesome, something, something, something. I don't know. I'm not going to sing the video here. But also occurs of the line right here, Sea Troll. So obviously I was trolling the MTG Finance community because I felt that would be kind of funny. And so I picked the Norwhales because A was the cutest animal in Homelands. And B, it had troll and the actual text of the card. What ended up happening was I purchased a few. The stores just who had them, they took them off TCG player. They just took them off the stores. I saw multiple stores cancel orders, uh, which maybe in a future video I'll call out, but it's not like a big deal to me because it's our Norwhale. But yes, yeah, so that's what's gonna happen. when you go ahead and you speculate on a card, the stores are gonna pull the, their stock. As soon as they notice something's up with the card, they pull their stock. Once stock is pulled, they either reprice it at a much higher price, all the way up to $20, or they just hold on to the card to see what happens to it. And that's kind of what I expected to happen, but not to the extent that it happened, where you know I went ahead and purchased from, let's say, uh, two different stores, a large amount, the two stores that had the most amount, and another two stores that had you know a few other near mint amounts, and all of a sudden, you know, stores started pulling out their inventory. Started, they have inventory. I'm positive they have inventory because at that time, no one's interested in this card but me. Uh, and the stores are looking at, you know, someone buying this card up and they're saying, oh, wow, someone buying this card up. We should like reprice or we should, you know, keep uh, the inventory and see what their new price is. A lot of stores, one store in particular relisted at $20. I think that was the highest relisting uh, point. But then something also interesting affected the price was MTG Finance then made a Reddit about it. I'm sure that kind of spiked the price even more. So as of the recording of this video, which is the pre-release date of Eldrick Moon, this card is still six, seven dollars on TCG Player. Uh, and the lowest price you can get right now is about six dollars so it's interesting because at the same time i had purchased this card which is kind of like a worse propaganda by a lot i cost one more and it's also not you know you have to keep a creature tapped so i don't view that as an advantage i guess some cards that's actually good to keep that your creatures tapped because maybe it has effects or something but that's not really what it is that's lo that's the minority of cards would ha would view this as positive. So I expected this one to go up. It went up a dollar fifty, but not very much. And that's kind of because the Norwhales, 
Uh, it's not whether the card is good or not. That's why I learned. It's not if the card is good or not. It's whether or not people are willing to push the card. So when people, when someone asks me, I know in the comments you guys have said, who's buying this stuff? Who's buying this stuff? It doesn't make sense. I can tell you I sold 10 copies of it for around $4, $5. And as long as you, if someone's listing it at $20 and you list it at $4.50, yeah, you're gonna sell it. Like I showed some on eBay, I showed some on um, to my friends. <laughs> my friends are like, hey, do you have narwhals? I really want them. Um, and yeah, and then I told them about the experiment and they loved it and I showed some to them. And to my subscribers, I'll probably send you guys a few. I don't know how I'm going to allot the narwhals, but as an interesting story, nonetheless, um, it was something I didn't expect. So the two factors that increased the price of this and was at one time able to push it to $20. Factor one, the stores and how the stores behave when they notice a card is buying it. When someone's buying a card, they don't behave, I believe, rationally. I would, hey, they can sell the card now for like a dollar, which is pretty good. Nope, they just pull their stock and then wait or relist at a much, much higher price. Because at that point, you don't want to sell the card. They just want to, you know, see where the price ends up. They don't want to sell a card that is $20 for $2, although the card really is like 50 cents. Uh, that was number one. Number two, uh, people just don't really care. Um, essentially, if they want to buy something, they will buy it. Is it illogical? Yes. But people wanted their Norwales, like, and there was demand for it. And the demand was artificial. It was I created the demand for the narwhals, uh, but at the same time, it was it became real, and that's kind of the scary part about MTG finance, in my opinion, is a single buyer can influence the market on a a very not. It's I picked this card because it's crappy. There's no other way for me to say it. It's not a great card. No one's playing this card in any format. Uh, in existence. So yeah, maybe maybe um, it was a bunch of these factors combined together created the Norwales because a few factors increased the price of this card, but not to the point that the Norwales got to, uh, not even close. And yeah, I felt it was kind of funny and I picked the card because it was a bad card from a bad set and it was a cute animal and also had trolls. I mean, who else would have done Norwales, <laughs> like, right? It's kind of a signature MTG line thing. Pick the cutest animal, pick the Falias and the Maleras and just buy them until, you know, they... And Falia is expensive now and so is Malera. Back in when I told you guys to buy them, they were Maleras under a dollar, a dollar twenty-five at most when I was like, buy, buy, buy. And Falia was only like under two dollars. So now they're not $2 or $1.25 anymore. Bye guys.